Hi everyone! Welcome to the Gardens and Graveyards channel. My name is Charisma and today we are in the garden and we're going to do a fairly simple project and transplant a couple of roses. So last fall I had two very large shrub roses that we dug out of a space that was too small for them. And we moved them to the hillside by the creek. And then this summer, up popped a couple of shrub roses in their place where I dug them out. And um, obviously we left some rootstock in there. They were absolute beasts to get out of the ground. So I'm not surprised that there was rootstock there, but they're, they're little and I know where they are now because they popped up. And I'm going to try to get those dug up. And I'm also going to just put them in the same general area as the last ones. Um, because they can just get big and wild and unruly on the creek side. Because that area is really just being reserved for like native plantains and, you know, sun-loving natives, really. Um, so... They are, um, they're, they are a native and they are a single petal shrub rose that get the most beautiful giant rose hips. So that is, that's really why I want them are the rose hips. I love rose hip tea. I use rose hips in a um, salve and they're fantastic to decorate with and make flower arrangements with. So if I have a big hedge of shrub roses with big, beautiful rose hips, that would make me very happy. Um, one of the roses that I dug up and transplanted over there did not make it. The other one did. So we could always add some more, right? The other rose that I'm going to plant out today, we bought at a nursery recently. Um, just this beautiful, deep velvety red rose um, and then we're just going to add that into the rose garden today so hopefully it'll be a pretty simple project it is the beginning of november and it's absolutely gorgeous it's about 52 degrees um, we had a kiss of frost just a couple days ago so i'm very grateful to have a sunny Mormish day to get this project done and get as many things in the ground as I possibly can because I feel like plants are far more protected with their roots in the ground than they are in a nursery container. So let's, um, let's get into it. This is the rose we're going to be planting. Um, I left this on here so you could kind of get an idea. Obviously, it's got a lot of rain damage, but you can see the de deep, velvety petals that it had. Uh, this is called Oh My Rose. And we picked it up at the Laurel Bay Gardens in Florence, Oregon. And then I've just got, I've got my auger. I've got a shovel. I've got rose cone, um, a small shovel, my gloves, and some pruners. And that's really all we're going to use today. The This rose is going to go in the rose garden here, um, right where that big pot of dahlias are. So those dahlias came from the backyard, and they were in a raised bed in a big mix. And I wasn't sure which what which tuber was which when i pulled them out so two of them bloomed this season and i tagged those i'm gonna dig those ones out and put them out into the garden and then the other ones i'm gonna leave in there for another season i'm gonna find a spot for that big pot uh somewhere else that gets more sun so that hopefully they'll have an opportunity to bloom sooner in the season next year there are some buds on there, but we only have one more day of sun, and it's not very hot sun. So I really don't think that's going to size up and bloom. Um, same with this one back here. Just didn't quite make it. So um, they're not a total loss, but I do need to transplant two of them out of there. 
These are more dahlias that didn't bloom. I'm actually gonna pull those out, pop them in this container so that it'll just be one container full of mystery dahlias in the front yard anyway. And um, we'll find a place for it to go. And then that rose is gonna go right there. Then down the way here at the top of the medicine garden, which is this terraced garden here, we had two roses over here that uh, got just absolutely huge. And one of the runners went over there. And it's a good six feet, seven feet away from where the original rose was. So I'm gonna pull that one out. And then this rose is also where the original one was. And this one was very hard to get out. And you could see how large it got just this summer which means it probably has a pretty good root system in there, but we're gonna dig that out as well and transplant it. Um, it's just, it's too congested right here. And mostly they're very, very thorny and the path is right here. It's a pretty narrow path, um, really only wide enough for one person and a wheelbarrow to come through. So when these get really big, they start stagging on your clothes and hurting you. <laughs> No, everybody loves a rose, but nobody wants to be poked by one.
I don't know if you can tell, but I have dug about two feet down below the rose uh, crown and I'm seeing no sign of the actual root ball and I have no idea how deep it goes, but what I'm gonna do is just cut it, cut these off down in here. I see that I've done that before with the last one and it's calloused over and those ones did not regrow, but this one did. You can see I cut it here and there's a sprout and it's this right here. So I'm just gonna do what I can. I might have to cut these back a few times. I might have to dig them out a few times, but um, yeah, I'm not gonna dig, you know, any further down. I'm just gonna cut these off. Uh, these do have some root hairs. So I'll pop them in the ground and see. This one has, oh, this one over here has a pretty good root system. So there's three or four in there that I can pop in the ground and see if they will take. If not, it uh, looks like I might get more next summer. Basically, all I'm gonna do is go as far down as I can, cut it. Uh, on all of these, like this one, looks like I cut this one last year and it did not grow back, but this one grew from somewhere, so. What I'm left with, I cut four out of here. These ones are from previous year. And I just push all this soil back into this huge hole. <laughs> uh, too bad I don't have a tree that needs to go here or something. But the whole purpose was I was trying to give this salvia some room to grow. I'm also seeing there's a tiny rose popped up right there. Um, right there. So I'm gonna go get that out of there as well and just kind of cruise through here and make sure there's no more sprouts that I'm missing. Well, that was a bigger chore than I was expecting it to be. Um, I thought that, you know, with only a year's growth, they wouldn't be, the roots wouldn't be quite as deep, but I see now where <laughs> I was wrong. Um, but I got them out of here and I actually just transplanted a, uh, one of my salvias in that space. And I'm hoping that with a the plant there, maybe those roots won't come up, but also we'll be more likely to pay attention instead of like, oh, it's an empty spot and now there's rose, fine, um, deal with it for a little while. Now it's like, no, that spot belongs to the salvia, so the rose cannot be there, and we'll get on it before it gets massive again. So now let's go ahead and take these little roses up to the hillside by the creek and wish them luck because there's no irrigation up there, which is why I like to transplant them in the fall because they'll have tons of rain all winter long, and it's just like... Mother Nature can let them grow or they could die. And I'm not invested either way. <laughs> so I had two of these um, rocking deep purple salvias from Proven Winners. I clearly have earwig and slug damage on these. Um, so I had one right here. And I thought I had the other one on the other side of this pineapple sage, but I planted them when this was dormant. And clearly the patch goes further over that way than I realized, which is fine. So I just plant, I moved it from back there and moved it up here. And now these two can kind of grow together and be a big clump and they'll probably grow much taller with more sunshine with that rose out of the way. And then these are the rose cuttings or babies that I ended up with. Um, so I ended up with one, two, three, four from that clump and 
two from uh, the other area. All right, so we're up on the hillside where I planted roses last year. One totally died pretty quickly. And one hung on just barely through the summer with no irrigation, no help whatsoever. There's just one side of it has a little sprout coming out of it. So I actually just took the six stems that I had. I took three of them and put them in one hole in two different spots, uh, right up against the root balls of the roses that I already have there. Um, my 2024 goal is to really really get in into this Creekside um, area and reclaim this space. Um, it's just kind of a wild mess and we've been working in the lower garden, um, which hug the creek bank that hugs our property. Um, this is kind of no man's land over here. There's a street right here and um, there's t a telephone or power wires right above me. Um, so I have to be careful about what gets planted, but kind of in this strip is the, what's considered like hell strip where it, it doesn't belong to me and the city doesn't take care of it. So I've talked to, um, a couple of different people with the, um, water district and the land and soil conservation and they all said just you know plant whatever you want there but then if the city comes and you know takes it out or poisons it or something then you know that's it's not your property so you can't like take any um action but if it's kept up nicely then they won't have any reason to do that so my goal is to just fill this up with natives that don't need a lot of maintenance but i will be adding a sprinkler system up here next year um in two two main areas just to get these babies established and once they're established they won't need the water but um i definitely need to do my due diligence in helping them survive their first couple of years so what I've done is I have, I had a big clump here and there's just one little sprout right there. So I put a clump of three little babies right here and that's what this rose shrub is. And then just up the way, I did the same thing with those, that clump right there. Um, and hopefully we'll just slowly start pulling all this ivy back and adding plants in. I did put in some red and yellow twig dogwoods in here and about half of them um, took. So it's something. And I also have a rhododendron that I planted right here. It struggled through the summer, but it's looking okay. I've been slowly rejuvenating this uh, roadie, which you could see is super leggy and so, so tall but you could see what the rejuvenation prunes do. Really nice and dense shrub. So if I just keep selecting um, areas to continue doing that, you can see a lot of dense growth in here. And that's from doing that with uh, roadies on the other side of this one. Oh, it's a slow process.
Now the rose is planted in her home and I've got one, two, three, four roses, five, I guess. That's There's a walkway between those two. I put the baby roses in the container right there. Might bump it back a little bit so that those roses have room to grow. Um, and then of course I've got the climbing roses on the arbor here and a rose um, behind the concrete rose bird bath. There's a little rose back there. So I think this is filling in really nicely with roses. Um, the other thing that I did was with the red and the dahlia. I just put this, this clump right here was in that container and I just put it right here with this one, which is also an envy. It just didn't get very big this year. So I put that in a clump together and then I have a Lady Liberty. Uh, this is the Lady Liberty right here, which is a white bloom. And then that's a red bloom. And this is a dark burgundy bloom. Um, so I went ahead and because that Lady Liberty is quite large already, I put the other Lady Liberty down here other side of the cherry tree right here. So we've got the two dahlias in the ground and then, then I took the dahlias that were in the little tiny containers alongside the big container of dahlias and I put them in the container, but I put, dragged the container out here to the front of the property. It's a little bit protected for winter behind the barberry. Um, the Rose of Sharon will just be sticks. So will the barberry um, in the spring sometimes. Sometimes they hold their leaves, sometimes they drop them. Um, I think that'll, that'll be fine there and kind of tucked out of the way and not real noticeable when it's just an empty pot. And we'll put mulch on it when the dahlias finally go down, but we won't put anything on top of them. All right, so that felt really good to get all my roses taken care of, all my dahlias taken care of. I garden on the Oregon coast in a zone 9A, and we do not have to dig up our dahlias and store them for the winter. Some winters I do because they need to be divided every so often so that they continue to bloom really well or I just want a different look in my garden, or I want um, you know, a different variety of dahlia and there's only so much space, so I'll dig them up and give them away, um, things like that. But um, for the most part, I could just leave my dahlias in the ground over winter, which is why I went ahead and put those tubers in the ground here. Um, if you're anything lower, in, in a zone any lower than mine, which is a 9A, uh, you should probably dig your dahlias up and cure them and store them for the winter. And if you're interested in how I've done that in the past, I will put the link in the description below this video so you could easily find how to dig and divide your dig, divide and store your dahlias um, if you if that's what you're needing to do this winter. So, um, I think that's it. I hope that you're celebrating your life and I will see you in the next video. Bye.